number one gives us a ramp and it asks us if the angle created is a safe angle. And they tell us that in order for it to be a safe angle, the maximum degree that it can be is 8.5. So in order to determine the size of an angle, you still want to um, label the sides. So if we're looking for this angle, the side across from it, so this 15, so directly across from it, is the opposite side. And then the one next to it is the adjacent side and the one that the car on is, car is on is the hypotenuse. So opposite and adjacent, is our tangent function, but when we're looking for the angle, then we do the arctan function of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Now in your calculator, most of the time, this will say um, tan negative one. Um, so arctan and tan negative one are the same thing, so type in tan negative one of 15 over 95, and that'll give you back your angle. And in this case, that degree that it's giving you back is 8.97 degrees. That is not a safe um, measure since that is not, so that needed to be less than 8.5 degrees and it's not. So this would be not a safe angle. Number two, find the length of side AC and then um, find the missing angles. So AC is the hypotenuse here of a right triangle. And because it says that it's a rectangle, so rectangle means we know that these angles are 90. So we're going to be able to do the Pythagorean theorem. So AC squared is equal to 3 squared plus 12 squared. 3 squared is 9, 12 squared is 144, so AC squared is going to equal 153, and then we will square root that. So you can either leave it as square root of 153, or you can do a decimal of 12.4. Then we need to find the measure of these angles. So I'm gonna find um, theta first. So I'm gonna be looking for this one. So I'm gonna label the sides based on this angle. So across from the theta is the three. So this is my opposite side. The 12 is next to it. So the 12 is the adjacent side. So I'll be setting up an arctan function since I have opposite and adjacent and I'm looking for the angle. So opposite is three, adjacent is 12. Again, this is also the same thing as tan negative one in your calculator. So type in um, the arctan or tan negative one of three divided by four and you get 14 degrees. Then when you go to find alpha, you can set up an arctan of 12 over 3, flip these around since this would be the opposite of the alpha and this would be the adjacent. So you could do another trig function. You can also remember that alpha would be equal to 90 minus theta since these two are going to total 90 and theta is 14. So 90 minus 14 is 76 degrees for alpha. Find the missing measurements in number three. So we're going to need to find this hypotenuse again and then find angles B and C. So a very similar problem to number two. So finding the hypotenuse here. So BC squared is equal to 35 squared plus 12 squared. 35 squared is 1,225. Um, Oh, not 12 squared, sorry, 21 squared. And 21 squared is 441. So add those together and you get 1,666. 
So then we will square root that and we get 40.8. So then we need to find the different angles here. So I'm just going to find um, angle B first. So across from B is 35. So that's our opposite side. Next to B is the 21. So this is our adjacent side. So this is going to be an arc tan to find the angle or a tan negative 1. So opposite is 35. Adjacent is 21. So angle B um, is going to be equal to 59 degrees. And then to find angle C, we'll just subtract um, 59 from 90. So we'll do 90 minus 59, and that will give us angle C, which is 31 degrees. Number four, select all of the true equations. Um, so A says the sine of 27, and remember sine is the opposite side, Y, over the hypotenuse 15. So this one is not true because this one did the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Um, cosine of 63, so cosine is the adjacent side, which would be Y in this case over the hypotenuse, which would be 15. So y over 15 is good. C is the tangent of 27. So tangent is the opposite side, which is y, over the adjacent side, which is x. So tan 27 equals y over x is a true statement. D is the sine of 63. So here's 63. Opposite side would be X um, over hypotenuse. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which would be X over 15. So this one is good. And then tan 63 would be the opposite X over the adjacent Y. So they have this one flipped around. So this one is false. Number five, what value of theta would make this equation true? So remember, sine and cosine, if these numbers add to 90, then they're equal to each other because they'd be opposite kind of angles in a right triangle. So we know that theta would equal 90 minus 30. So theta is going to be 60. And then um, these would be the same. Then the sine and the cosine would equal each other. Number six, a rope with a length of 3.5 meters is tied to a stake in the ground and at a 17 degree angle. So we know this angle here is 17. The hypotenuse is 35 and we're looking for an expression for how tall this tent is. And so um, when we have this angle, the opposite side of that angle is this height and the 3.5 is the hypotenuse since it's across from the 90. So we can set up a sine function. So sine of 17 would equal the opposite over the hypotenuse. And then if we cross multiplied here or multiplied that 3.5 up, we would get 3.5 times the sine of 17 would equal H. And that is option C. Number seven, um, what is the value of x? There's going to be multiple different equations that you can set up here depending on which angle you would like to use. I'm going to use the 40 degree angle. So then um, we see this is 40 and, and 50, which total 90. So we know that this angle is a 90 degree angle. So we'll be able to use trig. Um, the x is the hypotenuse. Since I chose this 40 degree angle, the three would be the adjacent side. So I'm going to be setting up a cosine function. So cosine of 40 equals the adjacent side three over the hypotenuse X. And so then cosine of 
40, we'll type into our calculator and we get 0 0.7660 equals 3 over x. We'll multiply this x up so we get 0.776x equals 3. Divide by 0.776. And um, we get that x equals 3.9. Number eight, find the missing side in each triangle using any method that you would like. So we do see that we have right triangles here and we have two out of three missing sides. Um, or two out of the three sides. So you could certainly use Pythagorean theorem. We also see that we have a 90 degree angle and another congruent angle. So we know that these triangles are similar. Um, so Pythagorean theorem would be fine or similar, like, or using scale factors. So I um, am just going to use scale factors. So I see that this side is similar to this side. So if I'm going from the small triangle to the big triangle, then the scale factor is going to be multiplying by three. And if I'm going the other way, then it would be dividing by three. So if I'm going from this five to this Y, okay, the Y is larger. So it's going to be five times the scale factor of three. So the Y is equal to 15. And then when I'm going from 12 to X, so that one's getting smaller. So the X is going to be equal to 12 divided by 3 or 4. All right, then in this last problem, number 9, it says that these triangles are congruent and it wants us to write a sequence of rigid motions that would take x, y, z, so this one, onto a, b, c. I'm just going to type this out. So these two triangles are not touching, so we're going to have to do a translation. So translate um, triangle x, y, z by the directed line segment connecting any corresponding parts. So I'm just going to start with the first letter. So by directed line segment X, and we're going to put X on to B. And we're going to rotate. Um, so that's going to move, let's see here, that's going to move X on to B. So if you want to kind of see what's happening, um, then we're going to rotate triangle X, Y, Z, um, around point B, since that's the one we got connected, until, and then I'm just going to take this next point here, Y, until Y lands on or coincides with C. So Y goes to C. And um, so if I do that here, remember that this B stayed the same. And then um, Y was right here. So now we lined this up. So then we just need to reflect triangle X, Y, Z by the side that we just got together. Um, so reflect triangle X, Y, Z over line B, C. Then it would land, everything would land right on top of each other.